All right, folks, today's the day. We're gonna work on this old army truck. I would call this a deuce and a half. I'm sure there's a more correct model number for it, but I don't know what that is. The cool thing about it is it has this dump box, which I believe is original. And I don't know if I've ever seen another one set up that way. It's got some oversized tires. Otherwise, you know, it's pretty original. It's in good shape. I think it's from the early 1970s. And the reason it's here is because of the suspension. The axles are walking out. So the, the rear axle will get shifted sideways compared to the front axle. Which, you know, that's not that big of a deal. But because it has these oversized tires, it rubs on the suspension and it wants to kind of climb up on top of itself. And the guy said it's pretty sketchy when that happens. So we're going to pull it inside. I think the problem is that these trunnion bearings here are loose. We're going to see what we can do about it. This truck's been here for way, way too long. I feel really bad. I've just been slammed. I haven't had a chance to work on it. It's big. It takes up a lot of space. I didn't want to tear it down in my shop and not be able to get other stuff in. But that's not really an excuse. Anyway, let's see if we can get the old girl to go. I think we're going to have to flip this master switch. Turn neutral. Hit the start button. Well, that's fun. Box is full of water. And the floor drain is over there. <sighs> All right, I squeegeed off the floor. It's draining out there on the hill. Let's try this again. All right, I'm gonna wiggle the spring a little bit side to side. Watch that trunnion. You see that movement? I don't think that should be there. All right, this trunnion bearing has a cover. I popped that off. And inside, it looks to me like it's just a pair of tapered roller bearings, just like a wheel bearing set. You see that play? I think that's a problem. I don't know if it's all of the problem. Looks like it's a three inch eight point. I'll have to see if I have one. Well, what do you know? I did have one. Well, it's not tight. I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. That's two flats, about two and a half. Let's see if our wiggle is gone. Oh yeah. All right, let's go ahead and pull that bearing out. I just want to know what we're dealing with. Well, it looks like it's in good shape. I don't see any problem with this bearing. It looks looks new to me. There's nothing wrong there. The book here, it does not tell us how to set these up though. There must have been multiple different designs for this bearing set because the, the manual only describes a tapered bronze cone. 
part number 29 and part number 15. It's not clear to me whether the bearings, the tapered roller bearings are an update, so it doesn't really matter. The way that they set, say to set up the bronze bushings is kind of like a wheel bearing. Torque it to 50 pounds, back off a quarter turn, and then the outside nut you tighten to 150 foot pounds and you're good to go. I think when we set it up, we'll just tighten it up to zero lash because I can't see any reason for it to have any kind of movement. We have to repack this bearing so we can try out a new toy I picked up. This is a bearing packer. Got a couple of cones. And all you have to do is stick the bearing in one way or the other. Doesn't really matter. That way it'll do, I think. Like so. Now the whole thing moves up and down. And pumps bearing, bearing grease up into the cone. There we go. You see it just popped out around the cage. Beautiful. One fully packed bearing. There we go. All right, 50 foot pounds. there. Now, back it off a quarter turn. Be right about there. There. 150 foot pounds. There it is. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, I don't know why that can't have a symmetrical bolt pattern, but it doesn't. That's okay. That's it. Hopefully you guys can see just how close this tire is. I mean, it's one finger width away from that bolt right now. And there's actually more room for the whole axle to move over before the spring would hit that, the side of the spring perch, or whatever they call it, the spring pad. We did fix the spring side to side movement, so I guess that's an improvement, but I just don't think it's gonna solve the problem of the dog tracking and the tires rubbing. These tires are just too big. So the only other component of the suspension that could really be worn is these dog bone bushings. There's 12 of them, and I'm not an expert about any of this suspension, but they look pretty good to me. I, I just really don't think there's a problem there. And you could spend a fortune replacing all those things. And you figure, figure at a minimum an hour a piece times 12. Plus you gotta buy parts. So yeah, that could get pretty pricey. So there's a single bar at the top and then one on each side at the bottom. Kind of a classic suspension setup. Uh, there's also kind of some wear pads here on the inside surface of these spring pads. But as far as I can tell, it's not replaceable. And you can't adjust the location of these spring pads. They're bolted to the axles, but there's a big boss on the top that they fit over, so they're fixed side to side. So you're really just kind of stuck with what you got. Pretty cool setup under here. There's the cylinders that dump the box. I'm not sure if it's a scissor hoist or how, how that's set up. That looks like the valve that controls it. And this big guy here is the transfer case. There's a big drum on the back for the parking brake. There's the transmission. The power steering is crazy. I think that's what that big cylinder is there on the back side of the front axle. It looks like to me like it's an add-on. Like these trucks were probably originally designed without power steering. And then they bolt that thing on. It's got to be a handful to drive with no power steering. Yeah, looks good down here though. Nice and clean. I mean, there's some oil drips, but no rust. 
All right, guys, I finished up the spring pivot bearing. And I took the deuce for a ride. There was no improvement, which that's not surprising. It was definitely not the problem. So I'm just checking the run out on the wheel, the rim and tire here. And it appears to be, appears to be excellent. So we don't have any kind of bent rim issues. The problem is for sure with the right side though, the right rear axle. I probably can't show you on the camera because it's gonna to be too dark, but it's already rubbed on that new bolt that I installed there. So that's the problem area. Well, folks, I've done some measuring and just some general visual inspection and I believe I've found the problem. So if we come over here and we shine some light. I mean, look at that spring. Can you guys see how the bottom two leafs there, the ones that go through to the axle, are not in line with the rest of the spring pack? See how it's shifted over like that? And you can see how there's a layer of mud on there? So it didn't just shift over, it's been like that for a while. And if I can get my light in the right spot, you'll actually see that that spring is worn pretty substantially on the inside there, about a quarter of an inch. This is on the left rear. This is the right rear side. Looking at it from the opposite end, so we're looking from the pivot towards the rear. You see how it's also not lined up correctly? Let me show you what it should look like. If you look here at the front spring, you can see it's perfect. So that's how it should look. All the leaves should be perfectly in line in a vertical plane. I don't know if it'll show up in this view or not, but that is the problem. The springs are bent towards, they're bent this way, towards this side. Substantially, like three quarters of an inch. <laughs> I just, I have no idea what could have caused that problem. I've never seen anything like it. Something had to hit that axle and drive it towards the left side of the truck with a huge amount of force. Those springs are, they're two and a half inches wide and each leaf is like, I don't know, seven sixteenths of an inch thick or something like that. So yeah, we're gonna have to replace those springs. There's no two ways about it. These are bud style wheels. So they're inch and a half hex on the outside, 13 sixteenths square on the inside. This socket actually can do both. We appear to be leaking on this side. Wheel seal or wheel cylinder maybe. These are inboard drums so both hubs are gonna have to come off. Let's see what's going on. I'm pretty sure these are grease packed hubs so if it's leaking oil out then it probably means that the seal around the axle shaft is leaking letting oil into the bearings and then it's leaking out the wheel seal. Or it could be the wheel cylinder for the brakes, I don't know. Anyway, you can see our deformed spring pack. Let's get her out of there.
So that's the seal that separates the grease and the oil. Well, I guess it should. I don't see any grease though. All right, folks, I think we might finally be able to put this military truck back together. Let me share some wisdom with you. First, if your wife ever asks if we, air quotes here, we can watch a four-year-old and a one-year-old overnight, understand that she's not asking you for your permission. She's probably already said yes. What she's asking is if you'll help her survive the night. And uh, that's no small task. Two four-year-olds and a one-year-old can take a toll. Second, it is not easy to get parts for a 1970s military surplus truck. I believe it's been apart for 19 days. Where do you want to start? One of the wheel seals was leaking. I could see that before we took it apart. Once we got the wheels off, it was pretty obvious that all four wheel seals were leaking. So we're never going to have a better time to do it than now. I pulled them all apart. I found one bad bearing here, two bad bearings there, not a speck of grease anywhere. So we're going to replace all the wheel seals, repack all the bearings, fix that up right. As far as the springs go, I tried two local spring shops and a driveline shop. Nobody wanted to help me. We used to have a really good spring shop called Davenport Spring. They got bought out by Mutual Wheel and they absolutely destroyed them. They can't do anything. They can't make any part for any spring at all. All they can do is order stuff out of a catalog just like you or I could. Anyway, I scored a set of used springs from a local junkyard. And they're actually a perfect match. So our stack here has 12 springs or 12 leaves. This new set has 12 leaves. They're worn, but they're not bent. As far as the other parts go, I ended up buying them from Memphis Equipment in Memphis, Tennessee. We had a bit of a snafu there. So I got all the bearings and wheel seals and gaskets that we need. That was not a problem. But the U-bolts, I tried getting these locally. They didn't even want to make the U-bolts for me. So he told me that the, I guess these trucks were available with springs. I guess 10 Leafs is the most common. And then there's 12, 15, and 17. He said they stock the 10 and the 17 leaf U-bolts. You take the 17 leaf U-bolts, you cut them down, and you make them in, make them fit the 12 leaf. Well, when I got them, I didn't have enough threads to do that. So I called him up and he said, oh no, I made a mistake. You actually need the 10 leaf spring, or 10 leaf U-bolts, and they're long enough to accommodate the 12 leaf springs. The problem is I had to wait for the 17 leaf U-bolts to be made. They were out of stock. So that cost me a week. And then it took me another three days to get the correct U-bolts. I did make one other discovery. The, I don't know what you want to call it, perch here that the spring sits on. It's pinned to the top of the axle. And the pin has, uh, well, it's had a bad day. I don't know if it was from the same incident or a separate incident. You can see in the bottom of the perch here, it's actually egged out about half the diameter of the pin. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. I don't think there's any way to really, you know, fix that. We're just going to have to line it up. We'll take a measurement off of the backing plate from the backing plate to the, the pin and we'll do some dead reckoning tighten it down and it should be 
should be good enough for the you know the purposes of this truck it's not like it's going into commercial service or anything like that let's start putting this thing back together shouldn't really take that long hopefully if it fixes it cross your fingers we're going to reverse the springs as well so we're going to flip them end to end so i'm going to flip it around and we'll use the unworn side we'll put that towards the inside where it rubs on the inside of that perch also the springs we're putting in have quite a bit more arch they're about i don't know one leaf taller than the old spring so it should pick the back end of the truck up a little bit which is always a good thing Well, the new U-bolt doesn't have this bend like the old U-bolt. The guy at Memphis Equipment said don't worry about that. And then the new ones have rolled threads instead of cut threads. So the actual diameter of the bolt's a little bit smaller. But they should actually be stronger. Especially since they're not corroded almost all the way through. That's a three quarter inch diameter U-bolt, 19 millimeter. It's worn down to about, I don't know, 12, 13 millimeters by half an inch. That's not unusual with this style of a spring perch. The problem is the spring perch fills up with crud and then it, it just rusts everything inside. Same problem with GM pickup trucks since the dawn of time. I think they're still being built that way on the rear axle. Now torque spec on these is 180 to 220 foot pounds. We're going on the tight side. There. You can't actually get a socket and a torque wrench on the inside bolt or inside nut. So I'm just taking my best guess. But the old torque wrench here, she's pretty well calibrated. Both the inner and outer bearing use the same outside race. The only difference is the inside diameter of the bearing itself. First casualty. That piece of wire got me. So it's kind of cool because the outer races are the same, you can actually reverse the hubs. And I guess later on with these trucks, or with a similar model truck, they did reverse the hubs and then they used super singles instead of having dual wheels. And what's kind of cool is that it has this shield inside the drum. So when the seal starts to leak, which it inevitably will, the grease or oil or whatever happens to be in it gets funneled away from the brake shoes. And there's actually drain holes out here on the perimeter. So the centrifugal force, centrifugal force will push the oil out through the drain holes and you don't get contamination of the brake shoes. It's pretty clever. That's it. We're going to replace this grease seal. I don't know if you guys can see just how 
beat up this stub is, but she, she's been worked over a few times. To be expected, I suppose. There's the new seal. And as far as an installation tool, we're gonna use the old bearing. Slide right up against that. And then I found this uh, cap off of a welding tank, welding bottle. And it fits just, just right over the stub. I'm sure there's a for real installation tool, but I don't. I don't have one or even know what it looks like. There we go. If you're thinking you can do this job without getting grease everywhere, good luck. That's not gonna happen. Now the book shows that there's a little cork wedge that goes in the keyway underneath the bearing. But the Memphis equipment guy didn't seem to really know what I was talking about. Apparently it's not, maybe not a, a common part or I don't know if it's just been discontinued or if it's not really necessary, I really don't know. I just cut some strips of cork gasket material we're gonna stick in there. If you look at the way this is constructed, it has to leak. I mean, at a minimum, it has to leak oil into the into the grease. But if you look in the book, I'm sure there's a very short service interval on these bearings. It's probably like 5,000 miles or something. Might be less than that. I know I had a couple buddies in college who were light vehicle mechanics in the military, various branches, and they always said they spent a lot of time repacking wheel bearings even on stuff that had basically no miles. Well, the bearing setup procedure is to torque the inside nut to 50 foot-pounds. While rolling, just wanna make sure we get everything seated. It's probably good. Now we're gonna back it off between a sixteenth and a quarter of a turn. Which is pretty pretty open. But I think we're gonna go, we're just gonna go two flats. Right about there. I bought new fold over locks. The old ones were in pretty tough shape. Usually get a couple uses out of those and then the ears will start to break off. Then we torque the outer nut. to 200 foot-pounds. That's it. We're good. This bearing packer is fantastic for this job. I've packed a million bearings by hand. And this beats it any day of the week. I've got one of those cheesy ones where it's two plastic cones and you hook up a grease gun to it. But it actually, I think it makes more of a mess than just doing it the old school way by hand. So that's just me. Beautiful. I'm sure this is not the correct mill spec double a grease or whatever you're supposed to use but it'll be just fine all right folks we're getting pretty close springs look good I'm happy with that. There's some big bolts here that come through from the backside that are supposed to pinch this saddle onto the spring pack. 
I cannot get those to budge. You can't reach it. Well, you can't get on it with a socket once the spring's installed. I can only get it with an open end wrench and it doesn't want to turn. So I think we're going to have to just leave that one, leave that one alone. We're going to go for a drive. Show you, it's not, it's not quite as good as I hoped it would be. This is the side that I think was giving us the problem. There's your problem. This one's loose too. I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, I'm gonna tighten those up and I bet it'll start a little bit better. Hey, you see it's all it's all cored out inside there. That or somebody's been wailing on the top of that terminal. Who knows? in a hard turn so the front axle should be all the way that way and the rear axle should be all the way this way this is the one I'm really worried about but it it does not hit I mean all we need is more than zero I don't know why but on the right side the rear axle is a little bit further forward than the other side yeah I just don't know why well, folks, another problem has revealed itself. Take a sight down the right side here. See how the two wheels are basically perfectly in alignment right now. Right there, we're lined up on the front axle and the rear axle is just way off. I think the rear axle is bent significantly. I believe that it's pushed back. I don't know how that happens but or how long it's been that way or or what happened to this poor truck but that's what I suspect I had the missus help me we measured from the outside of the wheel to the outside of the wheel front and back and the front axle is perfect the rear axle it's almost a full inch difference from the front side to the rear side and I think it's over here on the left side of the truck not the right side so I don't know what to do about that. I mean, it's gonna scrub tires like crazy. But then again, if he doesn't drive it that much, maybe it's not a problem, I don't know. I guess we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what he wants to do. I don't, I don't know. Man, that's crazy. I wish I would have known that before we did all this work. I don't think this fellow's gonna be too happy with me. Alright, I better tell him about it and see what he wants to do, I guess.
How to go, lady? Get that get that car all cleaned up. Well, I mean, it's, don't look at the outside. I have a hose. Mhm. Mm and a pressure washer. Mhm. Mm Everybody likes to see you. I want to know what you're doing. Back. They're still waiting for your video about your new car, which will never be completed. It probably won't. Mostly because you have the footage. Yes, I'm holding it hostage. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's how it works. It's a pretty fancy rig here. I know. It's actually a lot more helpful than when I did the try to make a new car video footage because then it didn't have a loose. Well, here's the deal. If anybody out there is designing shop vacs, they all suck. They all suck. This one sucks. That one sucks. I mean, isn't that their the job? The wheels break. They fall over. Aren't their jobs to suck? They're just, well, yes. Very funny. So I, uh, I modified mine with a furniture dolly. It's much better. All right, folks, the lady confirms the axle is bent. It's bent. I think you can actually see it pretty well without the, without the wheels on it. If you sight down the, down the hub straight on, you'll see that it doesn't quite line up. And if you look at it this way, I think it's pretty obvious. So I'm squared up on the backing plate and it's it's definitely off. Good news is I think the axles are the same. Slight differences. I noticed the check plug is in a little bit different spot and I think they're actually made by a different company. So this is a legit, legit Rockwell axle. The other one says DTA whatever that means. I can't read most of the tag but I believe they're compatible. I think most of the parts of the junkyard axle were good. The third member is fine. I just I didn't trust it because the axles were removed, so the gears and stuff were exposed to water and whatnot for however long that thing sat in the junkyard. The brake shoes were junk. Some of the brake hardware was junk. So we're going to transfer all that stuff from the old axle, and we shouldn't have to worry about it. Unfortunately, the backing plates are riveted on. Otherwise, I would have just unbolted those and switched the whole backing plate over. But yeah, the anchor pins at the bottom on this side were pretty rusty, so we're going to switch all that stuff over. Yeah, I probably won't record that. It's pretty straightforward. I'll bring you guys back when it's done. All right, folks, we got all the parts switched over. It took a lot longer than I anticipated, but I guess that's to be expected at this point. The hardest part is getting the brakes adjusted. There's actually two adjusters for each brake shoe. So there are eight total adjusters on this axle. Easier to see on this stripped down axle. So at the top by the wheel cylinder, you've got this cam. And then at the bottom, the anchor pin is also a cam. So this one adjusts the brake shoe out. This one adjusts the brake shoe out, but it can also adjust the brake shoe down or up, depending on which way you turn it. So you really end up chasing your tail when you have to adjust both of them. So normally you'd only have to adjust this cam at the top unless you were replacing the brake shoes or in our case we're kind of switching everything around and I did replace the anchor pins on both sides so it took me a while to figure that out. It's in. It's pretty straight. Not much to it really. There's 12 3 quarter inch bolts through the various torque rods and spring hangers here. Four half inch bolts in the drive line and one brake line. I went ahead and bled the brakes. It's just like bleeding any kind of hydraulic brakes. Nothing to it. There is one catch though. I had a uh, well, someone reached out to me from YouTube. He has a channel called Tactical Repair. And he mentioned to me that these trucks originally would have had DOT5 brake fluid. 
which is a silicone based brake fluid. I hadn't thought of that. So he told me what you should do is take a sample of the brake fluid from the master cylinder, mix it with some water and see if it beads up. And I mixed it with water and it does not beat up. Which means this truck's been converted to regular old brake fluid. So we're going to put some DOT4 in it and we'll move on. The, the master cylinder location is hilarious. So the master cylinder is in an access panel underneath of the floorboard, but there's a cross member for the cab that's right above the master cylinder. So you have to kind of weasel around that cross member and then take off the cap. You cannot see inside the actual master cylinder. I guess you're supposed to pour it through that hole. So I better find a funnel. Man, I don't even like saying that. But I guess we're gonna have to. We'll fill that guy up, it's pretty low. shift through the gears. It's kind of weird getting used to the U-shaped pattern. Alright folks, I think that went pretty well, but I did find an issue. I popped the check plug out to check the fluid level, and there was pressure inside the axle. So the axle creates heat, and that expands the gases inside and creates pressure. And it has to be vented or it'll blow the seals out. The old axle tube had a vent drilled right in the top of the tube itself, 
but the new axle does not have that same provision. So I snooped around a little bit and it turns out the vent is in the side cover on the top of the third member there. So here's the cover off of our old drive unit, no vent. And then there's the replacement. So all I have to do is swap out those covers and we should be good to go. That's it, we're done. All right, folks, let's wrap it up. What a project this truck turned into. Way more than I ever expected. When he first brought it in and described the problem, you know, I was looking for a, a worn bushing or a loose bearing or something like that. And when I tightened up that, the trunnion bearing there and it didn't solve the problem, I very nearly sent the truck home because I couldn't find anything wrong. And it wasn't until I started really measuring with a, you know, a tape measure and trying to figure out the alignment that I discovered that the springs were bent. And then it wasn't until I got the springs replaced that I figured out that the axle was bent. So I don't know what happened to this truck. It must have been something pretty spectacular. And I had a customer in here who was a CB in the Navy. And I, I showed him what happened. He thought maybe the truck had been picked up with a crane. There's sling hooks on the trunnion and then up in the front. He thought maybe they picked it up with a crane and then swung it into something. I don't. I really don't know. I'd say it's had some significant work done on it since whatever accident caused the springs and axle to be bent. But why they didn't replace those parts, I, I, I just don't know. But the good news is I think we've got it completely straightened out now, both figuratively and literally. So the axles are tracking pretty much perfectly. That was the good side. And this is the bad side. So that rear axle no longer points off into space. Yeah, I'm happy with it. And uh, I don't know, it's hard to get parts for these military trucks, but we got pretty lucky. I was able to find the axle and the correct springs locally used but in good condition. So I guess I can't complain too much about the uh, the parts situation. Of course, I got the last parts they had in that yard. So maybe the next guy is gonna have a little bit harder time. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. I don't know how long this video will be. I feel like it's gonna be, it's gonna be kind of a doozy. Anyway, I'll see you next time. I think we'll wait until tomorrow to do something about this and this and this, and these.